Welcome back. A big story developing today from Russia and Ukraine as a continuation of the war that's been going on for the better part of the last year. Russia making a big claim today that two Ukrainian drones tried an attempted assassination hit on Russian President Vladimir Putin. He was not at the Kremlin when the incident happened and he's now working in a secure location. Russia, of course, claims that this was done at the behest of Ukraine. Ukraine has stoutly denied that, saying that this was most likely done by Russian mercenaries who are now not in the control of the Kremlin. Could this be a turning point in this year-long war? Could Russia use this, if for nothing else, but as a, an excuse to try and launch a counter-offensive against Ukraine? And where does this war go from here? Joining me now is a veteran global affairs commentator, someone who we've been in touch with and speaking to at regular intervals during the course of this war, uh, and of course, to try and put some perspective into what may be the near-term direction of this war. Uh, the host of GPS on CNN, Fareed Zakaria, is now joining me. Thank you very much, Fareed, for speaking with us here uh, on CNN News 18 on such an important day. My pleasure, Zaka. Um, good to be with you. Let's start with this big claim that has been made by the Kremlin. Overnight, they say that there were two Ukrainian drones that made an attempted assassination hit on Vladimir Putin. Uh, how do you view these allegations? Uh, what is the reading also, uh, both in the White House and the U.S. intelligence community, about this big claim that's being made uh, from Russia's side? Um, the, the feeling here is that it is probably not true. Uh, the Ukrainians were, certainly could fly a drone uh, that far. It's, I think it's about 800 kilometers. Uh, but it's not clear why they would do so, why they would do so now. Uh, Putin's uh, uh, offices and homes are very well fortified. It's highly unlikely that you could uh, achieve very much with it. Uh, and the Ukrainians deny it. It's always possible that they've done it, but it's worth remembering uh, first their, their uh, supposition that it could be Russian mercenaries who in some way angry with Putin, Russian soldiers. It's also worth remembering Putin has a lot of enemies within Russia. Uh, there are dissidents in Russia. There are disgruntled oligarchs. Uh, and, you know, what this really shows us, and this is an ominous a sign of the future of war, uh, these things are very easy to do. You don't need to be, you don't need to have a powerful army that's well equipped uh, the way the Ukrainian army is now. Uh, drones are not that expensive. They're easy to operate. Whether or not this was a highly weaponized drone, we don't know. But we certainly know that it would not be difficult for many, many parties to fly a drone that far into, uh, into the Russian territory. Uh, so you've said that this could likely be some kind of a false flag operation or this is a tall claim being made by Russia uh, and that Ukraine is unlikely or even have the capability to try and uh, pull off something like this. Uh, do you, precisely for those reasons, fear that Russia could use this as some kind of an excuse for a counteroffensive and, and even uh, choose to escalate it? Putin has been making these repeated threats for the last year about pressing the nuclear button and using tactical nuclear weapons and so on and so forth? Or do you reckon uh, that uh, they will not uh, wager climbing the escalation ladder for something like what happened today? Well, at one level, the Russians have been escalating all, all year. Uh, they have been bombing uh, civilian targets well outside of the areas of battle. They've been bombing hospitals. They've been bombing nursery schools. They've bombed power supplies. They've bombed Kyiv several times, even though that's far from the battle lines. Um, what they haven't done is use uh, any kind of tactical nuclear weapons and things like that. I doubt very much Russia would do that. I think that the Putin knows that were he to go down that path, uh, he would almost certainly lose the tacit support of uh, China, India, he might even get pressured by by both those countries. Uh, it would it would be a uh, strategic game changer in terms of the way in which the world viewed the conflict. And he wouldn't gain that much. 
uh, it's not as if the Ukrainians would surrender because Putin used one tactic, a tactical nuclear weapon. For the Ukrainians, this is an existential struggle about the future of their nation. And I doubt very much that they would change that. No, the battle lines have hardened. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we will wait to see what the Ukrainian offensive will look like. Uh, but I think in broad terms, what you're, what you're looking at is some kind of a stalemate where the Ukrainians will probably gain some territory in their counteroffensive over the next few months. But they will probably not liberate all of the Donbass, all of Crimea. And so at that point, you do have to start wondering uh, whether or not there is a path to negotiations, there is a path to some kind of uh, settlement. It will be very difficult. Neither side uh, is strong enough to win, but neither side is willing yet to compromise. And that's, that's why this is likely to be a kind of protracted stalemate. Uh, you've said a moment ago, and, and we've seen repeated statements from Ukrainian leaders about this uh, potential counteroffensive, this coming counteroffensive, including today when President Zelensky of Ukraine said that the counteroffensive is going to happen soon. Uh, do you believe that today's attack gives Russia a handle or an excuse to try and derail that counteroffensive, or at least, uh, if not on the ground, to try and uh, alter the terms of narrative around that counteroffensive, and how do you see the trajectory of this war, if at all this counteroffensive is going to get underway in the next few days? Uh, how do you see the near-term trajectory of this war? I doubt that it gives Russia much of an advantage. Look, the the issue is now really about what is going on in the areas of battle. And what is happening there is not particularly related to a drone strike in, in, on the Kremlin. Uh, there, as I say, it seems to be a stalemate. The, the Ukrainians will try, I think, to push back uh, and, in, in a sense, uh, liberate parts of the territory that Russia conquered in 2022. Um, I think they'll have some success, uh, but I think it, what's really going to be much harder is liberating the territories that Russia conquered in 2014, which is when they first took the Crimea and parts of the Donbass. Because there, the Russians have hardened their battle lines. They've been in there for almost a decade. Uh, they've strengthened, they have fortifications, uh, and they have some support from the local population uh, because those are heavily Russian-speaking parts of Ukraine. So all that means that I think while Ukraine will do well, I think in this counteroffensive, it will not do well enough to achieve a kind of complete victory. So we're back to the idea of a protracted stalemate.